Of course, they were quick to pick up Fade in that first position, but they're quick to ban him in second. Yeah, that's that's interesting in itself, but Polywalk Priest being blind banned here. We did see last game he was the final ban, I believe, from uh, Swindo Melons as the captain. So they they respect the Polywalk Priest. I mean, they, they don't they don't want to. I, I believe uh, Styles the one to play Polywalk for Q Squad. They, they don't want to let them get Polywalk. I find that a very interesting blind ban here, but. Either you know, I'm sure Swindon Muzz is definitely one of those players that does plenty of research and scouts out his opponents. So I'm sure there's some information that he saw, or maybe just knows this team that well that they do not want to face the Polywog of Q Squad. Demented Shaman, though, going to be the first lock here. Ah, oh, interesting. Going back to his roots, so to speak, is picking that solo uh, solo lane on in Demented Shaman. But yeah, the Polywog Priest is kind of an interesting pick, or sorry, ban rather. Um, maybe it's just a hero that he finds annoying to deal with. I mean, it's a very powerful hero. And uh, knows that Q Squad will utilize him and likes to play him. So um, just getting rid of that. And there's that Voodoo Jester yet again, <laughs> along with that Bombardier. As so. we saw yesterday. Yeah. So of course Voodoo Jester last game was locked, but was not picked. Mm -hmm. So kind of interesting. Uh, right clicks coming out galore. Uh, <laughs> look at all those <laughs> right clicks coming out. Something I would love me, that team, by the way. <laughs> something tells me it's not going to work out. That they way. should run that team. That would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. Berserker. Hellbringer, Amun Ra, Tremble. Yeah. And Hellbringer again. And d two Hellbringers. And you can never go wrong with two Malphuses. You know, Malphi. Always have trouble with that. Uh, I would. God, I would love to see Berserker, though. In fact, he, just the other day, I was actually talking to Paul. He's, he works here. He's a programmer. He, he helped in the design of Berserker, actually. He was one of the guys that actually came up with the, con the uh, original idea for him, kind of thrown out there. And, you know, eventually this hero became of that. He brought it up, and I was like, you know what? Yeah, I, I from the very beginning when, when he became eligible for competitive play, I said I would. I think this hero has a place, and I would love to see him. There's only one game that we saw him in, and it really it was a great performance, but his team ended up losing, and it was uh, you know not the the biggest of matchups by any means. So right, I would love to see him. Really, would I, I think he's he's such an entertaining hero too as well, which makes him great to, to watch. But <laughs> you know, pro probably not going to see him in the end. So not to get my hopes up. Uh, Ophelia and Pyromancer are the follow up locks here. Yeah, I love Pyro as well. I mean, Pyro is so much fun, and but I, I would love to see Bombardier. I think that hero does have a place mm -hmm. in the competitive scene. Of course, he has no point stun or guarantee stun. Obviously, if you do hit the Sticky Bomb, that's one thing in itself. you got to hit the Sticky Bomb first, yeah. and then, of course, you have to let it um, count down. But, uh, I mean, it's still viable. He does a massive amount of damage, just the ability to do uh, a huge amount of damage in burst uh, globally across the map, anywhere you want to. That's what we saw at Jepins yesterday yeah. for the returners. Do actually very well with that. And if you can aim those properly, or if you have a setup stun with you, like say you have an electrician with a, uh, with a long grip um, setting that up for you, it's very easy to, to combo up with that, that Bombardier ulti and get yeah. some very, very fast kills. Yeah, I mean, that. Uh, and then there's, of course, you know, the big AoE synergy. You got your Tempest locked in, you got Keep of the Forest root. I mean, it sets up those air strikes. Very, very effectively. Plague Rider is going to be the first lock here from SQY. Actually, a lot of... Holy crap! <laughs> okay, that lo I was just about to mention the lock pick phase took forever. The banning phase, we have four bans in two seconds. I mean, that just yeah. went crazy. Mage Bane, Warbeast, Draconis, Jeraziah. So both Swindon Melds and SQY very confident with who they initially want to ban. And now we have uh, one more ban for either side. And <laughs> go figure, this one... It's actually taking a little bit longer, but not too often you see a, a ban bans happen that quickly right there. Yeah, I'm sure the, the things to eye right now for both these teams are that Tundra, that Pebbles, and that Silhouette. Um, those are the heroes that really seem to be the strongest right now in the pool. Of course, there are very strong supports, being in Glacius and Luna. And the other thing I'm thinking about if you're Swindon Melons is I'm pretty sure QSQ has drafted Parasite. Yep, right there. <laughs> it's just, just on point is that Parasite just seems to be a signature pick for not only QSQ, but for Male in general. Actually, it wasn't picked last game, but was picked that first game. Obviously, Male played a great Cube of the Forest last game. By the way, his stats were 4 and 1 and 21. So, Trill. hell of a, hell of a wow. game for Male last game. But, and then the final ban is that Pebbles. So, um, if you're, if you're uh, GJ2012, you're probably looking at that Tundra. Maybe a Silhouette, but I would go ahead and say they're probably going to pick up that Tundra. Yeah, so I love that right click of the Hellbringer. I, I, that would be, again, something if we see a first pick Hellbringer here, but Probably not going to be the case. As you mentioned, plenty of support heroes left open here. Aluna, Nymphora, Glacius being the big trio. And, you know, that's what makes it so cool for if you are this Legion team, if you're Swindon Melons, you, you don't necessarily have to first pick one of those. Cause especially with Q Squad, SQY has proven time and time that he will, he will value Voodoo Jester 
over heroes like Glacius and Aluna and Infora. So yeah. it doesn't necessarily panic Glacius. you. He is still going to go with the Glacius first pick, though, just to be kind of safe here. And again, I'm not against that by any means, but you know, making the point that against SQI specifically, it's not as big of a, a risk. But It's also a smart pick when your first pick and Ophelia is in that pool. And if you're eyeing yeah. that Ophelia as far as getting that for a first pick out of the lock, pool, or lock pick stage, um, it's smart. You know, you don't want to play against the Glacius when you're Ophelia. It is annoying. It's not like the end of the world, but it's really annoying. It's hard to gank in that lane wherever Glacius is. So, and, and also, Glacius, even not with Ophelia in the equation, is just such a great, strong uh, support hero in the lane. So, yeah. it's, it's a fine first pick. I definitely agree with it. I still think Tundra is obviously a powerhouse. Maybe they're thinking his last game we did draft it and just... They have it in the back of the mind is thinking, or they're associating a lo that loss with Tundra. Who knows? But um, I think Glacius here is still fine. But I would not be surprised to see Tundra picked up by QSQ. Yeah, Moraxis is still on the board. It's definitely a hero that we see banned quite often. I think we've even seen banned in this series. But uh, he is definitely an option. Tempest and Tundra, though, going to be the pickups here from QSQ. And you look at those two heroes. That's looking like quite the powerful beginning of a lineup here uh, for QSQ. But as you mentioned, Glacius a strong first pick in his own right. So now we'll see how they follow up. Tremble is on the board, actually. Uh, Casey, of course, right-clicking that in. That, that is a possibility. We saw it even last game banned by Q Squad. Yep. And Kezu is known for playing a powerful Tremble, despite him not being a hero that we see too often. So wouldn't put it past Swindermelons picking up Kezu, uh, <laughs> picking up Tremble <laughs> to be played by Kezu here. Yeah, definitely. They could do Tremble in the short lanes, I think, what they normally do. And then Glacius plus something in the Tremble. mid. They do go with the Tremble and then the, uh, the jungler. So they're going to probably not opt. Actually, they still could go. For that, um, that Ophelia and have yeah. Keeper of the Forest. He's been seeing a suicide, lot more yeah. Keeper of the Forest going so suicide. And uh, it's actually very effective. I mean, he's got so much life. It's hard to kill him with that invis. And he's got still a, a very high base damage to get lots of, lots of last hits. So, um, yeah, I definitely think that's what they're going to do. And then um, probably pick something for mid. To, yeah, if to, they can get their DS for mid. They could do yeah, that, yeah. yeah. I mean, their, their lanes are actually shaping up quite well right now. I like it. Yeah. Uh, so now QSQ has a decision to make, of course, with their final pick. Um, you know, like I said, more actions I can actually see not being a horrible option here for uh, for Q Squad, but we'll see what they ultimately go with. Of course, you, if, if you're, you are looking for a carry option as well, you look at that pool, lock pool, and there really isn't a carry option in there. And they're going to go with Zephyr. How about that? And ah. With the silhouette on the board especially, and even Forsaken Archer, Nox loves to play both of those, but Zephyr, the bird is the word here for Q Squad. Mm -hmm. I have to do it. Yeah, I definitely expect the Ophelia to be picked up right here. We'll have to wait and see, though. Zephyr, I think their idea is they want to have the, the early to mid-game power. They want to be able to overrun them early before it gets to late, before you have to deal with the Keeper of the Forest having so much um, so much strength in team fights. It really does. I mean, the Keeper of the Forest with items and then the portal key on top of it makes it so devastating in team fights. Is Tremble the most scary late-game heroes, though? No, he, he's definitely not. But um, I just think that Zephyr is a... It, it, it's a strong hero, and people forget that sometimes. Yeah. So we did see. Him, did we see him yesterday? I want to say we saw him even the day before. I know it was in these last couple of days, I believe, where we did actually see him play. Um, I'm blanking on the. I think it was in the bunker down DMSN series, if I'm not mistaken. But how about that though? Plague oh. Rider picked up here by uh, Swindemel. And so you're so sure about the Ophelia? I was definitely on board with you, but no, they go with the Plague Rider. I'm guessing it's going to be Voodoo Jester and something here for Q Squad. Yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure about that pick. Um, I, I feel like Ophelia would have just fit perfectly in their lineup, of course, barring they do have a suicide keeper. But, yeah, I'm not quite sure. Maybe they, they just want the – I mean, they're copying almost what Q-Squad did last game with the King of the Forest plus Plague, and that combination alone is so strong. There's that D-Shaman that's actually snagged up by them. I would expect maybe Pyromancer actually to be picked up here to give us a mass burst. Um, even Bomb could be well – or it could be fine as well. Bombardier plus the Keeper – Plus, that Plague Ultimate would do a lot of damage. Yeah, there's Pyromancer <laughs> as the final pick. So how about that? Ophelia gets passed up by both teams, actually. Not to, not often you would see that, especially being in the lock pool, but uh, neither team felt it necessary for their lineup. So Pyromancer, the final pick over the Legion side. Demented Shaman on top. I really think, you know... I really think they would have gone to Mensen Shaman if you're Swindle Melons, but because it was picked up by Q-Squad, they figured, hey, we're going to have to go with Pyromancer. Another thing I noticed about DS pickup here for Q-Squad, normally you would think, oh, DS Zephyr, that's actually a pretty good lane combination, the gust into the healing wave. But in this case, I believe we're going to see a solo DS with a Voodoo Jester Zephyr most likely instead. So yep. um, they're going to get the solo DS, and as we've talked about that, that can, and as we've seen, prove to be very powerful here. I expect a DS top, uh, dual lane mid with Voodoo Zephyr. And a Suicide Tundra is probably 
uh, the most appropriate way to do this. Of course, with Tempest in the jungle, we'll have to wait and see. Regardless, though, they're still keeping to their strat is bringing as many people down here, uh, marching here in this line to get that ward off. And then pretty much the same thing happening over on the Legion side. Gary Johnson, 2012, all marching up top here to secure that ward to prevent that um, pull from being stacked. Yeah, the Scorcher Pyromancer, I actually like this skin. It's pretty badass, just glowing the blue. Yeah, And uh, his abilities cool. are all blue as well, so he's got the blue theme going on. Uh, yeah, both teams are going to be able to get their Ward of Sight down fairly easily. In fact, we already see SQY placing his, and the Legion team well on their way to placing their own. As you expected, Tremble in that short lane, being played by KZ, of course. It's all just, uh, again, one of those really things that you just, you just really expect, and it just definitely happens. It looks like, though, they're not going to duel in mid. Instead, they're going to run a Voodoo Jester Zephyr bottom, actually, against the uh, Tremble. And I'm guessing, Tundra, yeah, he's going to go mid. And then Dimension Shaman top. So a little bit of a mix-up here from Q-Squad. They might actually just try to kill. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're going to kill this. But this is going to give them uh, a clear indication of what's going on. And I feel like they could actually respond to this. And the problem with throwing your um, your stronger lane in the long lane is if you do respond to it and you lose, that's pr almost a game. It's mm. kind of like, it's a big risk to take. And I'm sure that Gary Johnson 2012 is going to respond to this, as I see already. The Plague Rider is still going to be in that suicide lane. I thought they might have been. Yep, Treble's actually going <laughs> to go mid. So yep. very good response. And, you know, despite them killing that mound, yes, it's all fine and dandy, but it gave your position away and it gave your lanes away. Was it the biggest deal? Mm -hmm. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, so it is going to be Tremble versus Tundra here in the middle lane when it's all said and done. Um, you know, again, we kind of expected this to maybe be at the bottom lane, but instead it meets up in the middle lane. As you see Tundra off the bat, though, applying a good amount of aggression, but of course without that mound for Tremble, which is going to spawn here in a matter of seconds. Uh, he does have enough mana for it. It is off cooldown, I should say. And I'm sure we'll see it go down. In fact, there we go on the hill, as you'd expect, and he's going to start using that to his advantage. So now these lanes are shaped up. We have an idea... Uh, so you said you like this switch up though from uh, Legion team and Pyromancer Glacius versus a Zephyr Voodoo Jester. Do you think that's going to work out well for the Legion team? It's scary. If they're going to try to do something, they need to do something fast because uh, obviously they're going to have the dual range on the Zephyr. See, Zephyr's going to have a hard time getting any kind of farm. Q squad, or sorry, SQY is actually going to have to opt out. Or sorry, get the creep kills that Zephyr obviously cannot with that double range aggressive lane being Glacius and Pyro. But if they're able to spam their spells, which they need to do, spam them as much as they can in this lane before the levels overtake them. If they're like, say they get level three on both Voodoo and uh, Zephyr, I really feel like a gust onto Glacius was setting up with that cast gun on Voodoo could just pretty much burst him down instantly. So they have to be very careful to not get overrided by, um, or overridden by levels. But, you know, I still definitely give the edge to the double range, double nuke combination mm -hmm. uh, on this Legion side. Now, I do recall seeing this matchup in the past, Demented Shaman versus Plague Rider, and all I remember is Demented Shaman just tearing yeah. Plague Rider apart. Um, so we'll see the, how, how Jonas and fan stands as far as this matchup goes. Of course, playing against Skyzo on Plague Rider. So far, it's a 7-2 and two Demented Shaman against a now 6-2 and two Plague Rider. So you see the creep wave. It actually has pushed up quite a bit, but it's not going to fall back a little bit here in Demented Shaman's uh, favor, but... I'm guessing you expect that to be a similar thing here. Uh, yeah, well, sorry, Trample, actually. Oh, oh wow, yeah. yeah, it does now got the regen, but it's canceled immediately by the shards from uh, Tundra. It does use a uh, potion right there, mana potion. But, um, yeah, Plague versus uh, Tisham. I remember that game as well where he just got just decimated. And actually, Plague is going to be a lot of trouble. The stun is up from Tempest. It is level 2 stun, and he is in a world of hurt, actually. Demenish Shaman does have the level 2 entangle. Trying to apply enough damage. It's going to be close, but not mm. nearly, an, or not quite enough, it seems. It's going to pop that health potion. going to be fine. So, kind of unfortunate when you're ganking like that with Tempest because it does take a lot of mana. All of his spells cost so much mana. Look at those Glacial Blasts. 120 mana. Yeah. And his uh, Elementals, if you want to use them, that's 180. So, he's actually completely oom right now, yeah. and that's really going to slow down his And spot. he has a Ground Courier, bringing in one mana oh, potion. Just okay, blue. just got upgraded right there. So... I, I know. I, it seems like we've been seeing that a lot lately, but uh, it, it does get upgraded, so that's going to be good. Another adjustment is made, though. We got QSQ. They decided that the bottom lane wasn't going to be the greatest. They sent Zephyr Voodoo Jester mid. As a response, Sender comes middle on Glacia, so it's not going to be Pyro versus Tundra here at the bottom lane. What do you make of this uh, switch up here? I think it's smart, but when you make adjustments like that, obviously you're going to lose out on, on a little bit of farming experience, so they're facing up against the level 4 Tremble now. And um, actually, response coming out from Pyro. They're going to switch it up again. So Pyro mm -hmm. and Glacius are now mid. Tremble's going to take a TP, it looks like, from somebody at himself. And he's going to pour back down to the bottom. It's always funny seeing this kind of shuffling going around. Yeah. But basically, I, I feel like they're saying they're all in on this Zephyr, pretty much. 
We have multiple things that can carry this game. Pyro, actually, by the way, does so much damage late game with full items, mm -hmm. as well as Tremble. The team fight potential from Plague Rider and, and, Temp and uh, not Tempest, but Keeper of the Forest. They're like, okay, they're pretty much all in on the Zephyr. If we crush him, we pretty much win this game. So that's yeah. the thinking. Oh, yeah. I mean, more on Pyro, man. So that Fervor, man, it, it, he, he really can be considered an int intelligence carry. I mean, obviously, he's great for ganking early on. But be, speaking about ganking, a lot of pressure on Zephyr here. Doesn't have any Cyclones to use, and he will turn into that Roasted Chicken. So sure enough, Bloodlust kill coming out here for the Legion team. And that's exactly the start they were looking for. So as you said, Q-Squad, it's almost as if they're putting all their eggs into the basket of Zephyr Farm. Not the start you're looking for, then, if you're Q-Squad. Sender actually getting credit for the Bloodlust kill. So once again, I'm sure we'll see early boots on him, perhaps, as a result of that. But Pyromancer, a lot of damage later on in the game. Oh, a lot of damage early on in the game. Tundra at the bottom lane, trying to counter harass on a Tremble, taking some pressure himself. I think but Tremble could have out. actually almost yeah. manned up and killed him. I mean, Tundra is obviously out of mana. So that was a fight I think he could have taken, but wants to take the safer route. Gonna cancel that health potion actually popped and, and Tremble, one of the great things about him when oh, you attack so mid, lane. mid lane. The Cursed Grim, one more tick. Oh, it's still on him, he's gonna die. He cannot deny, he's like, God save me. No, it's not gonna happen. Now he could have been frozen. I don't think that would have been enough though, but he didn't no. have enough mana anyways on Glacia, so yeah. Good, uh, I caught the tail end of that, but obviously that was a good Cursed Ground placement for Voodoo Jester, and that's why SQI loves playing this hero. Yeah, definitely, I mean, the Voodoo, uh, uh, Voodoo um, Zephyr combination is actually quite strong. Uh, it, it does work out well. Again, I love the Voodoo cast. It's such a great initiation tool. You really don't realize it. Um, and it works well with Zephyr because it gives you that damage over time on top of the Curse of Ground. It works out well. Um, yeah, Tremble versus uh, Tundra. Now, let's check out some early CS. Tremble sitting at 29 and 8. Tundra at 16 and 3. So the shuffling has definitely favored more of this Tremble. He's just able to regen more sitting in these mounds, attacking with his... Um, his Impalers gives him more life as well. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, he's having a good time. Top lane, of course, Plague Rider is not having the best time against this Desham, who's 26-6 and six compared to his own 13-5. and five. It's not the end of the world, but definitely uh, Desham having his weight in this lane. Yeah, definitely. It's, again, it's kind of one of those expected cases at the very least. Tempest, Ring of Sorcery finish. So to keep an update on how Tempest is doing. Also, Keeper of the Forest has his Ring of Sorcery himself. We'll see if a possible gank attempt, if not even a push attempt, happens here at the bottom lane. They just want to keep passive play for Tundra, or not Tundra, but uh, Tremble down here, who just spawns his Boris right there, by the way, as he hit level 6. He also goes to the side shop and finishes the Steam Boot. So he's going to start using that Boris now for the harassment on a Tundra, or, yeah, Tundra making it even that much more difficult for Tundra to deal with. In fact, there's some initiation from Tremble. There's the root coming out from Boris. is uh, not going to be a kill, but a lot of pressure being applied. So Tundra... He's, uh, he's starting to start feeling the pain now. Yeah, I don't think Keisu had any intention of killing him. Just wanted to get a lot of harass and damage down to get Tundra out of that lane so he can farm a little bit more safely and uh, maybe look to get a gank. And actually, speaking of ganks, here comes Keeper of the Forest. Has his ultimate ready. Maybe he wants to do something. He is invis. Mm -hmm. Can he get the opening up onto this Tundra? Tundra, the snare does come from Boris. There's the ultimate to follow from Keeper. Is it going to be enough damage? Maybe trying to block. He does oh. get a small block there with his minions and they will get the kill, ultimately goes to Z-Freak. Yeah, in a very smart positioning, of course, from Z-Freak. He's patient enough. Good job by Boris initiating, got the root off, and then he spawned the trees from up here. And as you said, really trapped Tundra. So if there was any chance he could have a getaway, it just wasn't going to be possible. So, again, smart play between the Kizu and Z-Freak right there in this tower. He's going to take a little bit of pressure, but not going to be a kill by any means, especially with, guess what, Zephyr and Voodoo Jester down here. So possibly <laughs> another move going to be happening from Kizu. Wow, they just can't seem to find... Uh, the right decision, but I mean, it kind of goes to the point though, you know, if they're so involved in a strategy of getting so much farm on a Zephyr, why have they not just sent him to the top lane? Yeah, um, I'm not quite sure. That's a very, very good question. Here, the problem here is they don't have a very clear suicide hero because you have Demented Shaman and Tundra. Only one of those can suicide. Yeah. So one of those has to have a favorable lane. I mean, I guess you could switch Demented Shaman towards the oh, mid, but it's always... Lane. Uh oh, top lane. Yeah, let's check this out. We have Pyromancer going on. There's the play. Oh. It actually does bounce, believe it or not. They were very far away, but it still does bounce. Uh, Diminished Summon's in a lot of trouble. He is quite tanky, though. The stun does come out. It's successful. <laughs> there's the ultimate from Pyromancer. This is out so much damage. He just wanted to make sure. Right? You know, maybe there's an unbreakable from Demented Shaman or something like that. So, you know what? I'm going to guarantee the kill, which he did right there. So, yeah, good job from Swin and Melons. It's a good attempt from Tempest initially, actually putting the stunts out and nearly saving Demented Shaman, but Plague Rider being there especially, just too much uh, power 
overall. But yeah, so the switch ups here from the Hellborn team. I mean, Zephyr's far. It's not bad. He has 250 gold per minute. It actually is pretty solid here for Nox. Uh, he is on his way to a Helm of the Black Legion. He picked up Mystic Vestments first, though. Uh, so that'll send him behind, but obviously it makes sense to go that. Middle lane, though, going to be heavily pressured here. Meanwhile, at the top side, Plague Rider, a lot of trouble. Tundra chasing, not going to be enough for the kill, though. Plague Rider will survive. This tower, on the other hand, not going to be the same story. They're going to clean up the Ballista and go to kill it, but it's just out of deny range. Glacius running in. This is going to be a difficult decision right now. Tempest nearly death. Glacius running in. The, t the Glacial Blast will set up the kill. As, uh, or actually, the Ice of Prisma sets up a kill for Glacius right there. And the middle tower goes down. And the top tower is going to be denied. Wow, that was a trio of events that did not look too good for the Q squad. They're banging on all cylinders right now. Tremble, in the meantime, still having a great time farming down here. The gank is attempted from maybe Pyromancer. He does have the Invis rune activated. Um, of course, SQY does have a rune of sight down here. I don't know if the Invis was bottled and then popped uh, earlier or if he just picked it up from the bottom. Not quite sure. But either way, SQY on Voodoo is playing very passively. He walks all the way back there despite having full life. I think he maybe have a war has a ward of revelation. Nope, there's just two wards of sight. He's going to try to get some more vision up. But yeah, Tremble just free farming. They got to kill top. They got to kill somewhere else and deny the tower. Things are looking really, really good here for GJ 2012. Yes, it is. Coming up to 10 minute marks. The 10 minute mark now, we need to keep it the forest spawning some trees here at the bottom lane using the Ring of Sorcery and now going to make that uh, solid push here happen apparently as also Trembo goes to the side shop and actually just purchases a homecoming stone but uh, I'm not going to be too aggressively pushed I guess unless is somebody heading down here. It looks like Glacius level 6 right now. He's also going to head down here. Um, we'll see if maybe with this creep wave, probably with the next if they are going to commit to something. You see the mound put down. Here's the next creep wave and the tree dogs joining the party as well. Tundra and Voodoo Jester are here though. Uh, so there already is some defense being committed from Q Squad coming out. In the meantime, Zephyr and Demented Shaman, they're kind of counter pushing the middle lane actually. So they're going to force a decision here from the Legion side. And it looks like it's going to be to fall back. And that's what they make them do. So it's a small little victory there for Q Squad. Uh, you could argue. Speaking of Demented Shaman, uh, Jonas and Fan, 264 gold per minute. Again, not doing too bad himself. But Zephyr is up to 300 GPM now actually. So again. He's been doing pretty solid Helm of the Black Legion. Yes, it has been delivered to him now. So he has that as well. So, again, some positive news at least for Q Squad. And, and when it comes to team fighting, you know, Zephyr leading the way with that. You got Tempest on top, and Demented Shaman could definitely be impactful. Could be to their favor, but at the same time, you look at the Legion side, they also got quite a powerful team fight themselves. So, yeah, it's no guarantee by any means. The longevity, though, I think of, of Zephyr having these, um, I mean, a lot of the damage, in fact, most of the damage, coming out right now from the Legion side is all magic. So if he's able to get a barrier or a Shaman's uh -oh. head, that's actually a big fight. I'll let you take over, Brian. Uh, Ruka already used Crusher Ground put up. A Voodoo Jester taking a lot of damage as a freeze on Demented Shaman. Trying to save his team. It's an ultimate used by Pyromancer, but it's not going to kill TS. He puts the healing wave on Typhoon now to counter. Coming up from Zephyr and the Hellborn team trying to turn this around. His Q-Squad. The Tempest ultimate canceled immediately by Swindomelons right there on Pyromancer. Keeper the Force still barely alive. Tempest will fall to Swindomelons, and he's going to go for a double tap kill. Actually, as Tundra's down a little bit of trouble. The Vlegu comes out to that Shaman will fall from it. Tundra goes down, and Zephyr will also be picked off. So Swindomelons finishes with a double tap right there as Voodoo Jester ports out, preventing the genocide. It looked for a couple seconds there that Q-Squad was going to turn around, but GJ2012 held their ground and won the fight in the end. Uh, it's Swindomelons, good job canceling the Tempest Ultimate pretty much right on par. And, uh, I mean, also, I don't really know if using that Typhoon onto a tanky hero like uh, I think it was Tremble actually, yeah. who has has the mobility inside those mounds, able to maneuver himself. It really did nothing. I feel like it should have been used on the squishier heroes of like Pyromancer, who's doing all the damage on your team. So uh, kind of an, un an unfortunate placement there of that ultimate, but nonetheless, good job specifically by Swindle canceling that Tempest. Hold. Acid cocktail coming out. Poor coming in for Demented Shaman takes a little bit of initial damage, and the tower gets destroyed. Actually, that was definitely a denied opportunity there. But uh, the Q Squad not able to take advantage of that. So again, our Legion team right now. What a, I mean, two tower kills. The they clean up the heroes. So that just looked great. Again, on all cylinders really, for uh, for the Legion team. They are now up to a 9,000 goal lead. Actually, a 7,700 experience lead. On top of that, so things really looking good right now for GJ 2012. You got Zephyr, as you said, though the Typhoon placement definitely questionable. Going for Tremble rather than maybe for Parmet, and you got and Parmet was really the the big part of that fight. He canceled the Tempest Ultimate. He did a lot of that damage when it's all said and done. And you know, again, go go figure, pull up the damage chart. And sure enough, he is leading the way in overall hero damage yep. at 16%. So again, great play from Swinomelons in the end. 
It's uh, looking more and more scary for Q-Squad. That whole investment into Zephyr just being able to take over. It's not happening just yet. It's not even just Zephyr. I mean, look at um, the farm on Tempest. This is a hero that had, didn't really have a resistance in the jungle right uh, for most of the game. And yeah. it's just not getting the farm that Tempest should. And you have to attribute that a lot to Wolf. One, the gank attempt that failed on Plague Rider that uh, took up a lot of his mana. He couldn't do anything for a long time. In fact, he had to deliver himself one mana potion, which was originally on a regular walking core, yeah. then of course turned into a flying. But all that adds up, his farm is so low, and that's not what you need on a free farming tempest. And the two deaths on top of that now. So, yeah, Malay, great player, of course. We've seen some great success from him, specifically in that jungle role. But this time around, not having the greatest time on Tempest. So Zephyr just going to try to keep doing his own thing here at the top side. Of course, that tower already killed while pushing up the lane a little bit. Pyromancer, those are just illusions down here, so... Just uh, kind of having some fun and uh, cleaning up the creep wave. But Voodoo Jester will quickly send them back. But Portal Key has already been purchased by Pyromancer. Speaking of him, on top of Steam Boots and that bottle and power supply. So <laughs> uh, Swindle Melon's having the start uh, for a Pyromancer that you definitely want to have. And again, just more scary news adding up for Q-Squad. Kezu on Tremble, as you would really even expect. 400 plus gold per minute. Wow. This is why this hero is even banned, even blind banned against him, as we've seen. Uh, it's just he's just so good with it, and he's level 11. He's farming 411 gold per minute, top in the game in both of those stats, and uh, he's still just doing his thing here in the middle lane now. And, and th that's the thing with this hero. I mean, this is usually a build we see on him when we do see him. Is that hell in the Black Legion first after the Steam Boots? So he's not only a decent damage dealer, especially with that third ability in the Impalers, but also, he's also tanky. I oh mean, yeah, he's very difficult to kill. I gotta say with Kazu, I mean, he he plays it well. He micros his minion. Um, very efficiently, and even when he was in a lot of trouble in that team fight in the bottom, um, still microed his Boris while Pyromancer was trying to get a kill and, and assisted quite well. And just that presence of mind of still being able to help out, even though you're trying to save yourself, mm -hmm. is what really makes a difference. I did want to comment one thing. Check out this ward from SQY. I don't know if you've seen this, but it's placed over here in the yeah. trees. And it, I don't think it gives really any vision except maybe hiding over here. I'm wondering if this was deliberate uh, to see maybe a jump coming out from that side shop yeah. or if this was a mistake. But either way, it's it's curious. Yeah, there's a couple scenarios. I mean, actually, hold that thought, though. Tremble in the middle, middle end in the meantime. Speaking of being tanky, he uses that Dark Swarm right there. The Tempest ultimate even going to be used. Will they get the kill? Yes, they will. But at what cost right here? Flagu comes out. Pyromancer does his thing. Demented Shaman and Tempest will fall. A two-for-one exchange. And that looked pretty damn uh, bad in the end for Q-Squad. As Swindle Melons cleans up both kills. Bottom lane in the meantime actually happened. Keep with the force goes down, but Keizu buys back actually, picks up a kill on a Voodoo Chester, and now he's going for a kill on a Zephyr, but Zephyr will just portal out with the Homecoming Stone. Tundra, however, he's going to be caught right here. You see Glacius doesn't have enough mana for a freeze, though, and actually Tundra could turn this around on the Glacius while Parmancer jumps in. Oh, he misses the Phoenix Wave. It doesn't even matter, though. They take out Tundra before Glacius goes down. What a turnaround in the middle in there. That big buyout from Kayser. Now, he picked off who? I'm trying to Voodoo see Jester, here. I believe. He did pick off Voodoo, so making at least something happen with that buyback. But buybacks this early on when they're crushing, I think, are, are definitely valid. And uh, he still is sitting at a lot of gold. I mean, he was at 2,200, I want to say, 2,100. Now he's at 1,900, so not the biggest deal in the world. And, uh, yeah, that, that, that amount of... Um, usage of spells and whatnot onto that solo trample just did not prove to be effective as they turned it around very, very quickly with so much burst between the double stun Phoenix Wave combination from Pyro and that Plague Goo. Yeah, that just uh, was a thing of beauty right there from the Legion side. A very good coordination on their part. And again, just great response coming out from the teammates using those homecoming stones to their fullest. So, of course, this is game number three. Both teams obviously winning a game here in this best of the three series. But it's looking like Gary Johnson 2012 is going to be victorious here in game number three, at least earlier on. We're only 17 and a half minutes in, but still, they just got such a big lead here early on. Again, maybe I'm a little bit too ahead of myself, but still, things are just looking good all across the board. Zephyr, though, you do look at the gold per minute chart, and that is a little bit intimidating. I mean, he is farming 346 gold per minute, so he is... He's doing just fine in that sense himself. Middle tower going down right here. Will it be denied if vulnerability already come out? Tundra realizing he has to pour, but there comes the ice imprisonment, and he is going to be in a lot of trouble now. Tower will be denied, and Tundra just going to run. He has Ghost Marchers activated, so going through everything, trying to sprint away. Swindamelon's picking up Jonas and Fan in the meantime, but Tundra is going to be spotted out, just trying to be a little bit crafty. Not going to happen, though. Sender is on a serial killer streak now in Glacius. <laughs> so more good news once again adding up here. So you, you still got Nox on Zephyr doing his thing, man. But at this rate, it's it's looking gloomy here. It is, and that was a good um, separation of heroes. I mean, they pretty much knew they had the kill onto Tundra as they canceled the TV right in front of him. 
uh, with that Ice Imprisonment, and then instead, both Tremble and Pyromancer went on the, the, the D-Sham in the background, and it proved to be effective as they got both of them. And the Tower Deny as well, I'm pretty sure. Yep, Z-Freak actually did deny the Tower, so they're in a great spot right now. They got a ton of farm up onto this Pyromancer. They have a ton of farm up onto pretty much all their heroes. Lots of core items. Even look at Glacius. Sitting pretty tanky himself. Skyzo takes out uh, that tower mid. Actually gets that last hit there. As all pretty much heroes, uh, except for Pyromancer, are in the mid lane. Yeah, so. Uh, well, the initiator here looks like they're just going to fall back. Uh, first Congor is up, and we'll see if maybe that's an interesting mark. They're going to go for the double stack. They're going to triple stack it here, actually, for the Hellborn team. And then they're going to go ahead and clean it up for themselves. So smart play coming out right here. There's the triple stack. Pyromancer doing a lot of damage initially, but I believe the yeah the Dark Swarm is going to start cleaning them up for Keizu. And he'll get a good amount of these kills. So great farm coming out right there. I mean, that's just such a turn when you think about it. Not only did the Legion team get all that farm, but it prevented the Hellborn team from getting all of themselves. The swing is no doubt huge there in favor of the Legion side. So Zephyr... He's got a Shaman's Headdress finished. He has 12,000 gold saved up. He just continues to do his thing here in the jungle, trying to do enough. Portal Key now picked up on Tempest, so there is that good news there somewhat, at least for Q Squad, and what has uh, definitely been a, not the greatest game for them. Demented Shaman, level 10. His items, you know, not the greatest. He wasn't a matchup that was favorable for him, no doubt, and he just uh, really wasn't really able to ever have to amplify as, on top of that farm. So Zephyr, again, though, just doing his thing, trying to hold out there. It's looking difficult. Tremble pouring to the top lane with the mound, actually. They're going to try to set up on a Zephyr, but Zephyr's just a little bit too quick, and instead Tremble will farm, but may just make this into a push, actually, as some more teammates are coming here. Mighty Blade picked up on the Tremble after that board. Probably going to look for that Shrunken Head, which is a fantastic pickup against uh, Zephyr in particular. Also, another great pickup that we don't see that much is Barbed Armor is wonderful against that Typhoon. If you get l multiple barbs arm Barbed Armors on your team, and just sit there in that yeah. ultimate, he will fry. So um, That's true. That's a fun pickup to get as well. I don't see anyone else get on their way to get that. Pyromancer, he's picking up something. He has a blessed orb, probably on that way to that sheep stick, which has uh, received notable buffs in the last few patches uh, with range and then a little bit duration as well. So It also gives you better stats than Hellflower. Hellflower is still arguably a bit stronger, but still I think the stats is the biggest portion. Uh, or the reason, I should say, that Swin is getting this item. Yeah, we do see a lot of grouping up here on the top side. Both teams have five up here. Pyromancer, so that's an illusion back here. So, obviously not the real thing, but maybe trying to bait us something. Look at Tundra, Tempest, and Beauty Chester, though. They're playing very passive right here. They're just waiting for a jump to happen, then maybe counter. Shiver is going to spot out all these Legion players here. So, Q Squad r knows this information. I mean, they know what they're up against. They know what the positioning is. Well, actually, maybe not. There is Invisible Pyromancer in the Keep of the Forest, so... Totally forgot about that with Keeper. He's going to come out, though. He's going to keep Pyromancer invisible. Again, has that portal key. It's just about finding the right time. Do they go for Zephyr is also kind of another question here. Do they just try to pick off somebody else and fight around that Zephyr instead? I mean, he is pretty tanky here. He's, he's, again, he's had uh, some pretty solid farm himself. But the time of initiation is still at hand. Pyromancer, oh, he thought he caught Demented Shaman <laughs> there, but Demented Shaman just a little bit to the left. He did clear a pathway somewhat, though, so... Listen to the Beyonce. To the left, to the left. All you Jonas and fan, go to the left. Oh, look at this guy. Busting out the lyrics. He was listening, man. And Jonas and fan is a listener. He's a fan, clearly, of Beyonce. And goes to the left, misses that uh, pyro stun, and will ultimately be successful. They had a good idea, though. That I really don't think that they should uh, go on that, um, that Zephyr. He is very tanky. Now has his bulwark. He's got his steam boots. And, you're, and you got a Deshaun sitting behind him, ready to heal him and whatnot. So going on him, not the smartest, mm. smartest decision. Going on the rest of his team, waiting there, yeah. who, who are not tanky by any means. Definitely well, the Here we go, Rube coming in. Pyromancer misses, but it might not matter. Dementia Shaman barely left. Dementia Shaman will stay alive. Can they turn this around? Typhoon has not been used just yet. Keeper the Force, go for kill. Finally, DS falls. The Typhoon is down the Pelagu, bouncing around. That's so much damage, as you would expect. Tam is jumping in. He's got an ultimate, hasn't used it just yet. The Pelagu does so much damage. Casey going for the kill, but there's the lockdown. However, down goes Tempest. KZ now be locked in. He has a Dark Storm activated, though, and KZ turning it around. Tundra will fall. Hatcher coming up for Swindle Melons, and Voodoo Jester just walking away. Swindle Melons wants that quad kill, and the quad kill he's very likely going to get right here. Yes, he will. Quad kill for Swindle, and a genocide. For the GJ 2012, they're going to push the tower, and the lead is just way too much now for them here. So close to annihilation. I wanted to see it, yeah. but uh, not going to get it. Yeah, I mean, Pyromancer does so much damage in fights. I really love this hero, and it's fun to see him. 
And uh, that was really close. I mean, that was scary. They weren't able to get that d shop dropped, and he was living a lot longer, I feel like, than he should. You mentioned the very yeah. beginning. Pyro actually, I think, missed the stun. Uh, did. What it looked like, yeah, and that definitely played a role into why uh, Disham lived for so long. You can imagine that fight would I mean, it went so well for them. It probably would have gone way better if they downed that Disham even earlier. But nonetheless, they just have too much gold and experience on their side. It's just almost impossible for QSQ to win a fight. I mean, Male, he's going to need way more items than he does. He does have the portal key, but it's just not going to be enough. He can't find a good position to get that ultimate. He's got to wait for uh, Tree. Now, Tree did initiate. But um, Tempest just wasn't able to find the right opening. Yeah, and again, he tried, but it was more so just a play guard. Our damage in general is just really yeah. intense. And uh, we, talk, we talked about it last game for Q Squad, and this time for uh, for GJ 2012. Obviously, play guard are playing a big role in that sense, but the damage chart, it shows actually Pyromancer, again, not, not too surprising, though, is dominating at 19% overall damage. KZU has 488 gold from it. He's got the shrunken head finished. I don't even know if he had it. That I don't think he had it that last fight. He just picked it up. There's zero charges have been used on it, so he still got the full 10 second duration. He has another 1100 gold saved up, so obviously Tremble in a very good spot. And we saw a little bit of that last fight too. I mean, again, just how tanky he can be. He activates that Dark Swarm especially. That's putting out damage, but it also takes 32% less damage. When uh, if they're outside of it, of course. So if they're inside, then it doesn't. But if they're outside of it, 32% less damage. So that's right. another useful part of that ability, not just for the damage output. But um, obviously, Q Squad, they're, 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 this is it. I mean, being game number three, you're, you're down by quite a bit, but can't blame them at the same time for still holding their ground and trying to make a comeback possible. But it, it's just looking so grim for them. Zephyr, he continues to get a little bit more tanky. He's got that Souls Bulwark purchase, 1,200 gold saved up on top of that. So. He's got some positives there. Yeah, it's just, uh, I think it's too late, honestly, at this point. I mean, let's look at Tundra. He went for the Ghost Marchers route, by the way, so, and, and has a, uh, a belt there. Probably looking for that puzzle box, but just not going to get it anytime soon by, uh, by any stretch of the imagination. And Voodoo Chester, of course, sitting at typical uh, items for him. Um, there's just a massive lead. I mean, 20k gold almost, 15k, well, I should say 19k gold almost, and 15k experience for Legion. And it's just. They're just going to ride their lead to the end. They don't have to do anything crazy. They don't have to do anything fancy. They're massively out farming them. And they know they have the late game. So yep. they're in a very good position. Yeah. We got Glacius actually up front here. But no, he's going to fall behind. Tremble will join in the front lines. Uh, he has a bound eye on, on him. So uh, and he wouldn't even purchase it. But they got a bound eye for the team. Of course, as always, very effective against counter warding in general. So that'll be good for them. Uh, Sender, speaking of warding, places a very aggressive bottom lane ward down here. Near the base, even the Hellborn side, they're very spread out right now. But once again, the Legion team going to clear out some ancients here on the Hellborn side and just continue to you know play at their own pace as they can definitely uh, definitely it, it can pay off for them. I mean, there really are no rush here to, to finish this game on their side. So just playing a little bit more of a cautious pace, but still having 19 kills to four. Just actually looking at that stat right now, and yeah. that's definitely showing off. Sheep's tick on Pyromancer. Yeah, that's a. Uh, Another powerful item indeed to have, and actually going to go for Congre now. So they're going to be the ones to try for Congre here finally now, 26 and a half minutes in. I don't, there is no vision. Okay, they do have a shiver here actually, so I believe they spot it. But it's one of those cases, I mean, they know what's going on, but can they actually stop it is the big question. Uh, however, uh, GJ2012, they're going to turn around and say they got to ward a side up here. Oh, they know Tundra where exactly he is. Sheep stick on his effort. Will they go for a kill? There's the Dragon Fire. There's the Phoenix Wave. Out comes the Trouble Lockdown Force. The ultimate from Pyromancer. And Zephyr will fall when it's all said and done. Does he have a buyback? I don't believe he does. Tundra is now running away as well as Demented Shaman. Tundra will survive, it looks like. Demented Shaman, not going to be the same story. He will go down. Unbreakable, keeping alive a little bit longer. But he falls. So Zephyr cannot buy back. And they're going to start pushing the base now. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they thought for a little while, okay, I'm going to initiate on Zephyr. Maybe going into this is not the smartest route. We don't know if we can actually take him down because he is so tanky. But wait a second, we did figure out quickly that he's not that tanky. Actually, Pyromancer gets initiated on here. He might be in trouble. The mech coming out. He is going to live for a little bit longer. He does get the stun onto double, d uh, double Ds. <laughs> double tab coming out for him. He is on a bloodbath, 13-1-5. and five, And this game is looking grim for QSQ. Yeah, it's, uh, it was already. And obviously after a fight like that, it's pretty much uh, not, not not good news here for for Q Squad. So like I said, it, they uh, this is game three. It's not a huge surprise to see them still in it by any means, but um, it's going to take a lot of mistakes on the Legion side to, to have a comeback happen here. So now 28 minutes in, they're down their their set of racks here already in the middle lane. Uh, Congo was never finished, so of course he is still yeah. up. Uh, so no token of life here on the Legion team, but. 
Um, they could definitely find an opportunity, I'm sure, once again here in the near future to do that if they choose. But instead of going back, regening and everything, they just kind of go to separate lanes a little bit here. In fact, the bottom lane, Tremble and Pyromancer, they're just going to quickly start pushing this up. So they're just going to keep uh, keep the throttle on here and keep Q-Squad on their toes as they can. Yep, I, it's going to be hard. I'm trying to think of things that they can do, but the lead is just so... It's a, they're so in such a deficit. I don't know what they can do. I mean, 26k gold, 21k uh, experience. They're really going to have to... I mean, I, I've said this before, in, in, in deficits this huge, you really have to <laughs> hope and pray for the other team to screw yeah. up badly. I mean, if both teams are equal skill level, the the team with this huge lead should always win every single every single time. Mm -hmm. And actually kind of funny, a health potion picked up on Pyromancer. It's kind of funny. Anyway, um, yeah, they're going to have to hope that all five of them are clumped up in a hole. But even then, I don't think they have the damage to take them. Yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. But yeah, I mean, Tremble, he is so tanky. Another 4k gold pulled up on top of his items. It seemed like just a second ago, Pyro got his sheep, and he's about to buy another item with 2,400 gold saved up. So... Um, yeah, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to fish here for things that Q-Squad can do, but it's just looking so grim. Well, level 3 Puzzle Box and Keeper of the Force actually just finished. Uh, we do see they're, they're trying to care somebody here. Keizu may be in a little bit of trouble of getting caught. Pyromancer's actually just using a nuke. And Keizu will be caught by the Avalanche. Will they be able to do enough to not even close to enough? In fact, a turnaround coming out comes a root on to Zephyr. Zephyr dropping quickly. Pyromancer doing most of the damage. If not all of it, you see the Unbreakable coming out. The Plague is bouncing around in the background. Zephyr will fall. Voodoo just says, see ya, bitches. I'm out of here. GG well played. It's being called, though, and it looks like it will be official. We have Gary Johnson 2012. They will defeat Q-Squad two games to one. And as a result of that, they're now 2-0 here in what is Group A here yeah. for Destination DreamHack. So clearly off to a great start. Granted, both of them 2-1 victories, so not the maximum amount of points, but still... Wins are the first thing that matters, so big start here for GG, GJ2012. Definitely, and uh, that puts them in a great spot for their group, of course. And against uh, what's arguably one of the best teams in their group, being able to defeat them two games yeah. to one is obviously going to put them in a great spot. And GG well played to both teams. I mean, we saw, you know, actually look at the standings right now. Uh, TT Esports in Group A um, right now, they are 2-0 and with six points. GJ 2012 now 2-0 with four points because they only get two for a 2-1 win. Yeah. Um, Isopelite, or Isopelite, 1-0 with three points. Q Squad, 1-1. Uh, one one. They still have a game, of course. Uh, Q Squad, 1-1 one one with four points. Returners, 1-1 one one with three points. Uh, FYKU, 0-1 with one point. Of course, their games have not been updated. But yeah, that, those are the standings right now for Group A. Yeah, you got FYKU and Isoblood actually are still in game three, I'm being told. So uh, that's a 1-1 series right now. So we'll definitely looking forward to seeing how that finishes, maybe yeah. not by the end of this cast. But, again, if you go to DreamHaunt.com, that will have all your information that you're looking for as far as overall standings and whatnot, as well as HauntCast.com for a lot more information. And, of course, all the VODs and everything that we cast here. As you can see, these are the results from today that we do have. That's, only, that's the only match that we don't know the results from. So the Returners, they do defeat Team Kirk. Two games to nothing. Yeah. Uh, you got TT Esports again taking our call at Karma, as we said. GJ, obviously, winning over Q Squad two games to one. And then FYKU, Nice of Palette still in their game. How's Group B looking? Um, group B, we got Zit taking two games uh, to nothing over DOS. Pikachu, of course, we said this two games to nothing over Druids. Lions taking two games over Will Smith. And then Bunker Down actually taking two games over Black Sheep. That's, again, yeah. a matchup I really thought Black Sheep would do uh, just a little bit better. Of course, it is early on in the group stages. There's still lots of room for growth in uh, right now. It's not over just yet by any means. We're very uh, close in the beginning. But starting out now 0-2... Not where you want to be. I thought Black Sheep would do a little bit stronger, but we'll continue to follow them as the rest of the, uh, the other teams in both groups as this follows. This is, this is actually going by really quickly because, like you mentioned, <laughs> it's the grand finals. Man. Yeah, the best <laughs> of five finals are already going to be next week. Yeah. So um, it's coming up. Um, let's take a look at Group B, actually. You mentioned Black Sheep. They're, they're starting 0-2, but how's the rest of the group shaping up? Bunker down. Apparently, ap apparently they played a match from the future, I'm being told. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it looks like, yeah, so th I, I guess, again, with this condensed schedule, there is a chance of some possible rescheduling and, you know, just to make sure that they can all the matches played. And I right. guess they rescheduled against Lions, and uh, that was going to be their match six originally, but they played them already, and they won that. So Bunker Down is already 3-0 and with the maximum amount of points, actually. So Bunker Down in a very good spot. Right off the bat here, of course, Lions, despite that loss, they are still 2-1 and one record. Uh, Pikachu at 2-0 and oh with 5 points. Zit at 1-1 with Druids at also at 1-1, but Zit 4 points and 3 for Druids. Will Smith, best driver, 2012 swag, 0-2. <laughs> DOS, 0-2 as well. And then Black Sheep, as we just talked about, also 
0-2 at the bottom. So again, it is still early on here in the group yep. stages. There's going to be seven matches total for all those teams. When it's all said and done, and you only need to make top three, as I keep stressing at the very least. I mean, again, winning has its advantages, but top three is really what matters. So yeah. still early, but hey, you want to get after those strong starts. And as we saw right there, those are how they're shaping up so far. So interesting so, stuff, definitely. Yeah, Bunker Down, how about that? Doing so well early on here, starting out three, and that definitely helps their chances of getting in that top three yeah. in their group. Uh, obviously, but um, yeah, and as far as the games go today, guys, I think that's about it, but um, Swill Mountains and crew, Gary Johnson 2012, uh, definitely making a stand against Q Squad, who looked fantastic yesterday against the Returners, yeah. and just a great team overall, as they've had a lot of practice, and Gary Johnson 2012, this is a newly formed team, of course, they've been cycling through some players, um, but it seems to look like it's going to work out better this time. It, it does, and you know, it, this no doubt no one as a skilled team, I mean, it's hard to... It's hard to really uh, argue against that experienced player as a skilled team. Yeah. It's just whether or not, you know, they could put it together in time for this event because it did come up quickly, and it is so short. Again, we keep stressing that. It's really condensed, but 2-0 start, again, especially Q Squad victory today. I mean, as you mentioned, this is definitely one of the more favorite teams in this event. And if a victory over them, I'm sure they're feeling really good right now. So we still got ways to go, though, all the way till Sunday where we'll eventually know which all the teams are. But we're continuing coverage every single day up until then. So on that note, let's take a quick glance once again at the matches that are happening tomorrow. The matches, of course, that we are going to be ca casting is Pikachu versus Bunker Down. And, you know, as a result of what happened today, that's even that much yeah. more important because Pikachu, I believe, they're 2-0, and and then Bunker Down 3-0. So that's, uh, that's some battle to, for the space there up at the top of uh, Group B. So I, I am looking forward to that matchup. Maybe not the most sexy named teams out there, but still... <laughs> Uh, a great matchup, nonetheless, that should be had in a best out of three. I think after the standings that we saw, it definitely makes sense to watch them even more yeah. and see how they play, and that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Those are both great teams. Bunker Down, is, it seemed to really buckle down, if you will, and um, it, they've been looking a lot better than they did when they are under the tag or, mm -hmm. I guess, team name of Team 15. Uh, that's, of course, Zet Pro and crew, and it uh, should be a lot of fun to watch them. Pikachu also has gone through some roster changes as well. Yes. We saw them uh, in the Redemption Tournament playing with Swindle Melons and uh, Z-Freak, I believe. Mm -hmm. But they've actually gone back to their older team, I want to say, with Gordob. And, TPS uh, Prices, Solon, Near, Probusk, Wide Coast, Book, and Big Owned Me. Yep. Is there actually a full roster right there, according to roster list, at least, so... Yeah, yeah. That, that is going to be fun again. That is tomorrow's matchup, as well as all those other matchups. But, of course, Pikachu versus Bunker Down, the one that we're going to cover. So looking forward to another exciting day. Of course, that will be at the same time, the default time of 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, 2100 Central European time. Um, I just got an update. That's what we do here in Oncast, some live updates. What is that? I'm being told FYKU takes the series, two ah. games to one over ISO Palette. And, that's, I find that very interesting, especially since Iso Palette, they beat uh, Call It Karma yesterday uh -huh. in their matchup. So that means, of course, Iso Palette, they're now going to be 1-1, one one, where uh, FYKU is 1-1 one one as well. They uh -huh. took a game off of GJ, as we just saw yesterday, though. So yeah. a lot of things happening, but that is uh, another interesting result right there for Group A. Well, it's going to make for more even standings, I think. And yes. that's going to be more exciting as we come later on this week and see who are those final three in each group. So. Yeah, FYKU, man, they're, they got a fun name and everything always chuckle, you know, the fuck you, Curity, but fuck you, they, they have their experience recently, and, uh, you know, you can only get better, you would think, as a result of that, so I'm intrigued to see, you know, how they finish things off here in this event, but once again, still plenty more ways to go, so we are going to be coming back tomorrow with Pikachu versus Bunker Down. Uh, I guess uh, we can wrap up for today, though, for the most part. Once again, follow us on, uh, on at Twitter, at Trout Han. And at BreakyCPK. At Honcast as well. A lot of updates going on there. Follow the Facebook Honcast. And, of course, check out the two new websites, Honcast.com as well as Hontour.com. A lot of, uh, as always, being updated daily with news articles, content, videos, and everything. So, And in case you didn't miss any of the action today, video on demand on Honcast.com. So wrapping it up here, final words, Trav? Just GG well played to both teams. And looking forward to tomorrow's match. That's going to be Bunker Down versus Team Pikachu. Should be a lot of fun, guys. Make sure you tune into that one. Once again, I am Breaky CPK. Joining me is Ralph Medor here as always. Big shout out to Killer Orange. Shout out to you guys. Shout out specifically to uh, Jiggle Belly. Yeah. Good guy. A lot of fun. Enjoyed that previously. Anyways, that's going to do it for today. We'll see you tomorrow. Pikachu taking on Bunker Down.